Hello everybody. Today I want to raise an interesting question that just came up to me because uh, really, really, I can't do any video now without this cat just getting in there. See, look at that. I'm, it's not gonna. I'm not even gonna be surprised if he just like lays across the entire thing. Anyway, now that I lost my train of thought, so. Recently, <laughs> I had an opportunity to visit a Lexus dealership, and I helped a friend uh, try to like test drive and maybe pick a car. As of the filming of this, uh, he's still deciding whether or not to get a Lexus RX 350. But I had an opportunity to grab uh, some of these brochures, and as you can see, I grabbed all of the their sedans, IS their entry level, ES, their, their midsize, GS, their sporty one, and then the LS, their, their super uber luxury one. Uh, and then there were also uh, some SUVs and stuff, which I, I didn't take and some crossovers. Uh, but I started thinking, basically, is Lexus a new Lincoln? And here is why I think that. Well, first of all, look, they still have four sedans in their lineup. Now, I know the, there were some uh, articles that I read that the GS, the sportiest one, will be discontinued. Um, I guess it's probably their lowest volume seller, and plus, as you can kind of see from this lineup, all of it is, is sporty in one way, shape, or form. Um, they're still going for that sporty, probably for that German uh, buyer, well, not German buyer, but a German car buyer. Uh, so, so first of all, yeah, I mean, Lincoln, Got out of the, the sedan market altogether. Lexus still hangs out with, as you can see, these are all 2021 models. Uh, that GS one, that's a 2020 model. Uh, also, that LS one is a 2020 model. They did not have at the dealership 2021, which explains the, the GS situation. The LS, I guess, is because it's their pretty low volume seller. So they maybe they don't have the the updated ones but these are 2021 their their volume i'm guessing the es is probably their highest selling or most um, popular sedan and you know that that's that's understandable because it's basically a fancier camry in one way shape or form so so yeah so so number one they're still in the market uh with sedans number two they have a pretty good selection of compact mid-size sporty and full size so i'm thinking of I know it's not a direct comparison, so give me a little break in that. But, you know, you got the LS, that's like the ultimate, you know, the town car. Uh, GS, I can't really put it in, in, in any real category, but maybe the ES is, uh, I don't know, what, what would you what would you make an, an, an ES? A, uh, an MKZ, I guess? Um, then the IS, yeah, I can't really think of anything that would do the, the, uh, the IS, but that's like a super compact one. But in any way, uh, they still got, even though they're the sporty ones, and we're going to start looking at some of these, and I don't know how many we get through before I cut this video and make another one. But yeah, they even though they do have the, the sporty pretensions, all of them, and look at this fancy gentleman right there, um, they still have the luxury. They still, they still do. They're not afraid of the wood. They, they still got the clock the analog clock in the middle, so that's what I'm thinking. Hey, you know, they can be the next Lexus, though the Lincoln can be the next, I'm sorry, Lexus can be the next Lincoln. So let's start looking at these, these brochures, and yes, they all evoke style, and they all evoke, you know, high-end uh, treatment, and they have all the different IS 300, the uh, 300 all-wheel drive, the, the F Sport, they all do have this weird look, which honestly, it looks better on some cars and looks pretty hideous uh, on others. So this is a, a thing that everybody's gonna have to decide for themselves. Um, this is what I'm talking about, look at this. So even though this is high-end interior, I'm gonna try to keep the glare to a minimum, it's still got the clock in the compact. You know, this is their compact sports sedan. They still got the clock, and I love that. I love them for it. You know, they have the push button start. They still got the clock. Now, in this particular version, uh, they don't. I don't think they have any wood trim. But some of the other ones we're going to look at, you know, they they do, and you know, they they look pretty 
you know, sporty-ish, you know, with all the blacks, and I, I think it's a red or a burgundy interior. But, you know, it still has a sense of class. And I think in some of the other ones that we're going to look at, uh, they do have some, you know, they do have the sporty version, and they do have the luxury version of the same car, and, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So, yeah, you got all the, the, the swoops, the... Uh, the angles, the little laser-looking headlights right there. So, although I don't think they are laser, but they look like it. Hey, clock showing. I love that. And it's not all about the clock. But look, they have multiple levels. You know, they do have the red interior, but they do also have the whites and also the some of the, the you know the stitching. So I do believe that they have you know some alluring designs now keep in mind that i am not i i wouldn't go for this uh the little compact one i would go for the i e s or the uh l s but we'll we'll get there so check this out you know they're definitely going with the performance so yeah the the, the proving grounds all the the twisties yeah i don't think any manufacturer is going to skip on that part because i think that's that's their selling point point. and you know they do have the all-wheel drive would be nice if a town car came with all-wheel drive. Wouldn't that be awesome? And F Sport styling and performance. So it's interesting how they do here. They do have some that are the F Sport styling, which basically just gets you the sporty bits without any performance improvement. And then I think they do have the F Sport, which it's again some of the other brochures I think might uh, might show it better. Here yeah, you have the F Sport right there. So it's like they have a division that will actually tune the car, but then they also just have, hey, if you don't want the extra stuff, but you just want it to look cool, that's fine too. Yeah. Like here, I think this grill looks good. Some of the other ones, not so much. Ev evocative styling. So what's so evocative? This little angular thing here, and you know, the, the, the light bar, I guess. Design that catches eyes, not the air. Well, maybe. I don't know. Eh, I do like some of it, like I said. Yeah, so here we go. Got also the brown, although, like I said, this is their entry level. Uh, so not, not a whole lot of super premium uh, material. But also check this out. So they have three going across. You can clearly see three seat belts. But because they know that there's no way you would ever be able to fit somebody in there. The middle bucket, kind of the bucket bu buckle, kind of goes here in the center and it kind of folds away because they know nobody's going to be putting anyone in there. And you can kind of see even from this angle, there's not a lot of leg room right there. Yeah, so check this out. All right, so you have the F Sport steering wheel, right? It's got all the nice red stitching and the leather and all the buttons and controls. Awesome. But look, what do you see right here? Got the wood trim. That's also what I'm talking about. Even on this entry compact, you know, this compact sedan. And this is the F Sport shown with circuit red, new lux and ash interior trim. So they do give you that option. And that's what I'm talking about. Uh, that's kind of what I've been saying in, in a lot of my videos is that, yeah, you can have the sporty stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. But give me the luxury touches too. And I think this is what we're coming across here. And you do have all the technology, okay, all the safety stuff. Um, okay, you <laughs> if you really want to start your car from your, your watch, you can do that. Um, yeah, and look, they are not trying to hide the fact that, oh man, this, this clock is a you know it's an ancient design. No, they're they're putting it there on purpose because maybe in their mind this is what the customer wants. And here we go, you know, we got the 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 300, the all-wheel drive, and then the F-Sport 2. So you got some packages, so here we go again. They are treating this as, um, you know, as, as an add-on. And that's what I said, like, yeah, a lot of people will not want that, you know, if you're in the sporty stuff. But for a few people who want the luxury, I, I say give it to them. It's not going to cost too much. Now, this is kind of cheap. You know, this, this vehicle new is probably in the, you know, 40s somewhere. But, you know, you do have the sunroof as the option. Come on, just give us the freaking sunroof. Don't charge the options for that. All right, so yeah, here we go. 
So we got, so in this case, you got the IS300, 241 horsepower, all-wheel drive gives you a boost. But then if you want, if you do want the F-Sport, it does give you the uh, higher output engine. Also different transmission here too. Interesting. Zero to 60 times gas mileage. Not bad. Not bad. I like this. I like this uh, type of brochure. All the different wheel options, 18 and 19. Good photography. I would think some of it is computer generated. All the color and all the different accessories. So, all right. So this is the first look into the IS. Uh, it's video, yeah, it's, it's getting kind of long. So, all right, we'll see you next time with the ES and possibly something else. See ya.